got some notes, a couple of watches. Um, okay, intro. Let me do a little bit of an intro after my last video from last week of this new Black Bay 58 Blue. Um, first of all, thank you for everybody that's watched it. I'm up to 3,000 views now, which is which is lovely. I'm not trying to get lots of views, but it's nice when people watch it. Um, and some very positive, interesting comments, so thanks for those. Um, I also need to apologise for my swearing, because I was a bit over the top. I was effing and blinding, and perhaps I shouldn't. Um, so, um, I'll try and keep it under control, but when it comes to... Um, when it comes to Rolex dealers, they do get me going. Uh, so anyway, I've had to watch this this Black Bay 58 Blue two weeks, and as promised, I wanted to do an update on where we are and what I think of it, good, bad, and the ugly some of the design features and so on and so forth uh, and then as requested by a couple of other guys who made comments I'm just going to give a quick overview on my Rolex Explorer and a comparison with this although there is no comparison really a different type of watch but I'll come on to that bit later okay so here it is and here comes the cat would you get go away go away cat go on go off Oh dear. Um, cat. Cat over there. Okay, so let, let's let's just let's just um, give this a quick mark, uh, wipe over. I've just washed it, but let me just. Quit. Extremely hot day. It's already 28 degrees or so. So let's cover off a couple of things that I need to just say. First of all, I don't know if this shows it up. I think it does. The bezel, there is a problem. That bezel does not line up at the 12 o'clock marker. And I've noticed this on a few watches for sale on Chrono 24. So I think they've had a first batch. I mean, this is like a first edition watch, if you like. So. Um, this is one of the first that came out of the factory and I think they've got a problem with some of them on the bezels. The bezel does not line up, I hope you can see that. It's just to the left. And if I turn that round now, which is gorgeous to use. Turn that round, bring that back up there, you will notice that if I stop one click, oh, there you go, or one click, that should be lined up. And it doesn't. I've told the dealer, I've emailed um, or Facebooked, I should say, Tudor. So they are aware of it and I'm expecting a new bezel or be asked to send it back or whatever. It's not it's not a problem, but it shouldn't be like this, particularly on a watch costing three, nearly three and a half thousand euros. So it'll get sorted out and it's not it's not killing it for me, but it's not the quality you would expect from a watch like this. Anyway, moving on to some positive points. Um, okay. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Do I pick it up first in the morning as opposed to the Rolex? Yes, I do. And the Rolex I've been wearing as my go-to watch every day since I got it. So that says something for this. It also justifies why I got it, because I wanted to buy a watch that I could pick up every day and not have to worry about the odd you know, worry about it, which, I mean, I don't want to scratch this, of course, but I don't worry about it. It keeps really good time. It looks good. I think you'll agree with that. The blue is more of a denim blue than some of these royal blue or navy blue people have been saying. I think it's a denim blue. And yes, the bezel blue is slightly different to the face blue, which I think is a real benefit. I think that's something that's quite good as a design feature. Now talking about some other design features, these are things I've noticed now having had this. Look at that coin edge to the bezel around there. Isn't that lovely? I think that is really smart. That is such a nice touch. 
I mean obviously they've got to put something on the bezel that you can get hold of but I think that's really nice nicely engineered beautifully done so on the other thing which I'm not sure this is going to show up properly there try and get that there the almost vertical sides to the watch case here if you look there that is almost vertical and I think as a design feature it's really nice really nice now on another feature which a lot of people hate are these rivets these fake rivets well yeah they're crap I've no idea why they put them on there except I do know why they put them on there I think because I've spent the last 40 odd years in advertising and marketing and brand um, brand strengths brand values brand differentiation and so on and so forth so I think I know why they're there and that is to make it look unlike an oyster a Rolex oyster strap bracelet because apart from that that's almost identical to a, a Rolex bracelet um, it is slightly different in this section here in here um, if you look at the Rolex you'll see that it's, it is different here um, but but the actual links and what have you are almost the same in the way it goes together is almost the same um, you can't quite get this as comfortable as that as that Rolex because inside here although it is you can take links out of the bracelet of course although you do have some adjustment here on these three points these three positions here it's not the same which I'll come on to in a minute as the Rolex um, Oyster link system which is mega um, keeps excellent time looks good is very comfortable and I think that's all to do with the balance between the watch head the, the watch itself and the bracelet they get the balance right the weight distribution so it sits on your wrist without uh, without it feeling um, without it feeling top heavy or, or grabby at all um, now that I'm gonna it's too bright, I think, to show this, but the loom on this is extraordinary, really extraordinary. I don't think... Can you see that there? See that green loom? If I put that in the sun there, I'm going to put it over there for a second, get that in the sun. And then bring it back in here, you might just be able to see that. The loom is amazing on this. It doesn't last long, of course. I do you can see it all night long but it it dims away fairly quickly but the loom is um, there's more of it because the indices the indices and the hands are bigger than on the Rolex so there's more of it um, and it is much brighter than that much brighter um, so yeah excellent on that score as well um, value let's talk about value and I'll sort of drift onto this Rolex because that comes into play as well at this point. Value. For the watch here, as it stands, I think this is exceptional value. I really do. I really do. The quality of build, the materials, the movement, the accuracy, the finish, the style, the design, everything. That's an incredible watch. And I'm not sure. I'm no watch expert. Um... I'm really not. I'm a watch lover. But I don't think there's another brand out there, another watch out there today, where you can get all this for that money. For 3,460 euros or 2,700 pounds or about whatever it is, 3,000 odd dollars. Um, the other thing I must say, with reference to my last video, is that I was banging on about availability. Um, and it's clear that I was correct in some regards that they were available a couple of weeks ago on the first dispatch, on the first stock levels they were available I would say that comments coming back to me from uh, various people around the world and looking at other videos of course around the world they were available definitely all, out of, all throughout Europe all throughout the Middle East, all throughout the Far East Hong Kong, Singapore and so on but they're not now 
that initial stock appears to have been sold. So it will be interesting to see how they recover this, how they get this stock level back up again, or are they going to do the same with this one as they did with the black one? Um, and you'd have to wait months, unless you got lucky, you'd have to wait months. So, um, I'm delighted with this watch, if that hasn't been made clear already, absolutely delighted. Um, let's get back to the valley for a second. I think this is exceptional value. And if we compare it, which is not fair really, but if you compare it with this one, the Rolex Explorer, is the Rolex Explorer better value or not? Well, it depends if you can get one, doesn't it? The Rolex Explorer is more comfortable. No two ways about it. And with the adjustment inside here on this Oyster Link system, which is exceptional, that, that little bit of adjustment there, watch this if you can. Just push that across. Instant. Five millimeter instant. That adjustment makes a huge difference to the comfort and the wearability of the watch. But what it fails on, this watch, is legibility. And if you look at those two watches together, which one is more legible? Well, in bright sunshine there's not a lot to it. A lot, a lot, a lot between them. But this one, the Tudor, is far more legible to me. But once you get out of bright sunshine, once you get into interior lighting and, and evening lighting, this one, the Rolex, disappears a little. It's not as bright. You can't see it. And I'm not talking about loom, I'm talking about standard legibility of the face. So, right, I'm prattling on now, so I'm going to draw this to a conclusion. What do I think? The Rolex is fabulous, but you can't get them. Yeah, unless you're prepared to pay a bit over the odds. But even then, there's not that many. If you look at Chrono24, or if you look at eBay in your country or wherever you are, there aren't many of them. And they're difficult. And, you know, as I said before, you go into a dealer, and you say, can I have one? And they look at you, and they sort of giggle. Um, whereas I think this was available, will be available, and I think it's well worth your money well worth it it's a lovely watch it really is a lovely watch i'll wear it most of the day now i still wear this i haven't abandoned this by any means i still wear this and i think it's fabulous um if you want a rolex you can't really compare these two you can't because they're two different types of watches they're not the same to do different things similar you can compare them in some regards in terms of the fact that both come from Rolex and Tudor, which is Rolex. I'm getting attacked by flies now. Um, they're both well made. They're both quality pieces. But this is half the price of this. I just, like, really? Huh, I don't know. Um, so, there's a couple of improvements I'd like to suggest that Tudor make, but they won't, but I'll make them anyway. One is, I think you've got to get your quality control right. You've got bits like this coming out of the factory, it's wrong. No justification for it. And secondly, for the money, you've done all the tooling, you've done all the investment, you've done everything on this, this watch. Put this strap, the Rolex Oyster Link strap, on the Tudor, but with badged up Tudor. Badged up Tudor. Just do it. Just do it, or offer it as an option, for Christ's sake. Not that difficult, is it? And the last thing I'm going to bang on about, um, really, is this business of brands and how to buy them good, and what, how different brands treat you. Now, if I win the lottery tomorrow night, I win oh, yeah, 10 million, you know, and I want to go and buy a Bentley or a brand new Porsche Turbo or whatever, you know. I go to a dealer, I sit down, I have a cup of coffee, I shake his hand, I say, hello, how are you? Super duper, I'm rich, I want to buy one of your products. He doesn't tell me to piss off. He sits down and he says, yeah, of course you can. There's a three month wait or a six month wait or whatever it is. Um, he takes my specification, he guides me through the process, he takes a deposit and he orders it and he gives me a date for delivery. If I want to do the same with Rolex, I've just won the lottery, I walk into a Rolex dealer, 
I say, hello, I'm rich. I wish to buy one of your products. He'll look at me and go, no, no. I just, it's staggering to me, this Rolex model. It is the biggest load of bollocks you've ever heard. I mean, take somebody's order, take a deposit, make it a factory order and put it in the system. Tell them. Sorry, sir, there's lots of orders. We have demand and supply and demand and all the rest of it. We're not going to be able to get this to you until March the 10th next year. OK. At that point, you say yes or you say no. But they don't do it that way. They have this completely cock-eyed system that they do at the moment. However, I'm not going to go on about that anymore. That's my two-week conclusion um, or review of this watch. Is it worth it? Oh, yes. Is it really good? Oh yes. Should you have one? If you can get one and you're in, hello, if you're in the um, the market, you like the sniper watch, yeah, you will not be disappointed. You really won't. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, no doubt I'll make up something else soon and I'll be back. Take care and keep cool.